so I don't want to. So let me let me tell you one thing that we maybe should kick off for you. My wife returned this last night. So my wife was on Facebook and she's trying to create a group so that so that we can have a group, right? And you could, then you could like broadcast it to Facebook. It continually kicked her out saying that she had objectionable content and all it was was pray for the nation. Wow. She put up an American flag, said it didn't like that. And so I don't know if the situation that we're having now is exactly what's going to happen, but what he's going to do is he's going to record it, and then we'll post it later. So there we go. Okay. Yeah. Pastor? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. To your expertise. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, God. God, I thank you uh, for the opportunity that we can even stand around uh, a whole that symbolizes uh, our nation, Father, and the flag that symbolizes our nation. Uh, lift up that relation to you and we pray, God, that you would um, have your hand at work, Father, uh, in our country, God. Um, Lord, ultimately, it's all about you. And Lord, I pray, God, that, um, that whatever comes um, in this political season that we're in, Lord, that it would point people, it would direct people toward you, God. There would be a thought, there would be a spark that would happen, Father, that would cause them to look at Looking faith toward you, Jesus. Lord, I uh, I pray, Father, we're here at the nursing home, God, and I pray, Lord, that you would uh, your hand would be upon the residents here, Father, Lord, as most of them uh, have contracted this virus. Lord, I pray, God, that your hand of protection would be, would be upon them. Lord, we know that uh, as you walked in on this earth, Lord, that sickness. It had no authority, and we pray, God, that even COVID-19, it has no authority, Father, in your presence. And Lord, I pray, God, that uh, Jesus, just as you uh, came and you healed uh, every sickness and disease, Lord, in certain in certain times, certain places, while you were in ministry, Lord, I pray that that would happen here today as well, God, that you would come and you would heal every sickness and disease, Lord, Jesus, and that COVID-19 would be gone. Lord, I pray for the a staff, Father, for the, for the nurses and the administration here, God, that you would uh, protect them, Father, that your hand of safety would be over them, Father, that um, you would even form a bubble of, of protection around them, God, that they may uh, the virus, Father, and Lord, um, and Lord that uh, certainly even if they do, Father, that, um, that they wouldn't even be all that sick, Lord. God, I just pray for speedy recovery. Today and give them a calmness and security and safety that only comes from you. That they would recognize more than protection, where their salvation comes from. And we pray that for our city and for our state. And that we will be stable and protection of you. God of authority, but you are also a just God. And I 
sure it breaks your heart to really look down to see what we have chosen in this nation. We have, have said that um, when we kill our babies, it's a freedom of choice. And we watch things that are just for you to do. And we speak words that are so denigrating and awful. It's a freedom of speech. These things are, are not what we should be doing. And we, Lord, seek your face. And we just pray for your forgiveness as individual, as myself, Lord, for my sins. As a, as a nation, Lord, we come to you, come to you and seek your face. And we just pray that Christians, Bible believing people, will turn from their wicked ways. And seek your face. And uh, we just pray that people will <coughs> go out and vote for people that that want to follow you. Or we just pray that you will raise up people that are godly men and women that want to serve you in government. Lord. We just pray this in your name. Lord, I just pray for all of these people. These residents in the facility here. It wasn't long ago that these people were men that and women that served you in, in, in ways that we are doing now. This is seen that you know, there are Sunday school teachers, there are choir members that were serving you not long ago. You just see how temporary this life is. When you, when you think of this. And Lord, now they are at the season of their life that they are not able to serve you with their bodies physically, and some of their minds are not here, that they are not able to clearly speak to you. Again. But Lord, we just pray that they would be reaching out to you in this isolation because of this and then we are in a situation where they are not able to be surrounded by their friends and loved ones. Lord, they are not alone. When they have chosen you as their Savior, Lord, they are not alone. You are with them in their presence. We just pray that you would strengthen them, that you would heal their bodies, that you would surround them with your love, that they would know that you are present in them. I pray for this family. They are here in this facility working at this time, at this place, in this situation. Lord, you have placed them here for a reason. Lord, I pray that you would give them hearts that would serve you as they care for these precious people in this facility. Lord, I just thank you that you are a God that answers prayer, that you are a God that is with each and every one of us that have called on your name. Lord, I thank you that you have this whole world in your loving hands. You have a, have a plan, and it's a plan for our good. And it's a plan for bringing more people home to eternity. That is the end result, Lord, that you would be able to spend eternity in your presence. I just pray that your um, will we'll be done. And thank you for the many people that are here gathering in your name. We pray for our nation. We pray for you. your blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for a beautiful day for forgiveness and serving you. Father God, we thank you for the many blessings. Father God, we would no place we don't like seeing what's happening in this world in the United States. And Father God, we know that you are controlled. We know that you are controlled. that it, even at times get time, that we do not pick up to you. Know that they look to you and seek you. And Father God, that they would just trust in you. And Lord, we just pray for those in our home here, Lord, that you just be with you. Be beside and 
in order to not forget the truth, in order to stay to the truth, in order to thank you for all that you do, in order to pray for all the people that are here and pray that you just touch them mightily and let me open bless them and their families, in order that they just walk closer to me and we just ask for them. Lord, I'm in agreement with all these prayers. And Lord, I, I just, I remember that in Moses prayer for, for your people and your people. And for anger and for your people and for your people and your people that you forgive me this prayer and that you told her to be a teacher. And so Lord, we just ask for that today that you, um, I know that this Bible is coming through your will. So, Lord, I pray that through your authority that you will withdraw. And, Lord, before there is cure, before there is vaccine, that uh, anyone would know that it was a nice man or girl that would do this for us. I just know that you pray that first. You will know that you are God. You will know that you are God. And that's something to do after you do And so, Lord, we do pray for Thank you for letting us all gather here, the circle of friends today from different churches and different communities, just that we can come together in your name. And I just pray that we are we are coming together, coming here together, and we are believing together that all these prayer requests will be met. God, I just want to pray for 
uh, leadership of this uh, nursing home that they'll be guided by the Holy Spirit and be guided by godly advisors that they make the right decisions in this uh, home here for the people here, God. And I want to pray for all the pastors of Tioga and Ray and Stanley and all around this community, Powers Lake and Jerusalem, that, that they're just guided by you too, God, that they're just have a, that they're filled with the Holy Spirit, that they're making the right decisions for their church, and that they just lead us through this, God. I just want to pray for the our uh, government from uh, local to state to national and world. The same thing, God, that they're just uh, guided by godly advisors and the Holy Spirit is leading them in the right way to lead us and make the right decisions, God. I just thank you, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you very much for the world we live in, but we are in a nation of hurt right now. And we need a lot, a lot of help and guidance. Help the president to end up being the, the right one that was, gets chosen. And I pray for these years and all people and the staff, which I have a husband that's in here. And we haven't been able to visit them since March. And it's been a very, very tough situation. And now, now we don't know what's going to happen with any of us and I'm also going through a problem of my great or my grandson in law has cancer, liver cancer. He's twenty nine years old. His name is Andrew Raspin. I asked for prayer for him. He's just got a new baby that's six weeks old and going through a really bad cancer. So please pray for him and help him, Lord. Amen. Father God, you are holy and you are mighty and you are good and you are Oh God, how soon we forget. God, please be with all of us, be with our country, be with these people in this nursing home, Father, be with their families, be with those that care for them. God, we know that you can you can end this, and I pray that you will, but I will wait. I will stand and I will wait for you, God, because even though it doesn't make sense, God, you're in control. God, I just want to pray that we all have courage as we go out into the community, that just the courage is built up inside us, that we are just a light to you, that we're spreading your word, that we have the courage to obey you and to speak out, God, and just to fight for you. And God, I just want to bring, just, I've been praying for peace to fall upon us and fall upon our community, that we don't worry. Just bring peace upon this community that we just believe in you and that we have a good night's sleep and peace and we just walk through our day in peace, God. I just am praying for peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the folks that have come out. Thank you for their concern your heart and your response to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you shore up their hearts, you shore up their minds, you shore up their bodies. Lord, we ask that there's so much, there's so much hurt, and there's so much pain, and there's so much sickness in this world, Lord, we just, we ask that you bless us with being your salt in our life. Lord, we ask these, we ask you to revive these communities. We, we ask you to wake up the believers. We ask you to strengthen people that you need to stand up and stand in your place. Lord, right now it appears that things are very dark. It appears that things are very bleak. We know that you're there. We know that you're, we know that you're Bible is full of promises to us, and we just ask you to just to plead with you. Lord, we, we implore you, 
Lord, we just we need these communities to be a light and a beacon and have you have have you your identity shown through what and who we are. Lord, this nation has to wake up. This nation has been asleep for too long. Lord, we just ask that you protect the elections. We ask that you protect this protect this nation until the vote for the Supreme Court on October 22nd. We ask that you protect our local leaders. We ask that you protect and inspire, inspire, Lord, inspire people to want to serve in these positions. We become a nation of not joining and we become a nation of very selfish people and very glued to our own interests and, and pursuing the, 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 the material things in this world, Lord, we just ask you to just to just wake us up and to just help us, Lord. I don't know I don't know what's possible in this nation without you, Lord, and I just ask that you just continue to protect us and continue just just continue to pour out your spirit and to help us to help us to be the salt and light in the communities. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Dennis, thank you so much for and Jim for calling this group together on uh, National Prayer Day. It was just wonderful to meet down there and pray. And, uh, it's been a good habit to get into it Saturday morning without to pray. Uh, I, I'm grateful for the new folks and leaders. And I also would like to say that I have got coachman signs for anyone that would like them to talk about that a couple of weeks ago. And Free charge, right? Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. I mean, it's just a, a thing that I had an idea that we should we should do it. And Jim was supportive, and and the station was supportive, and you guys are supportive. And so I just want all you guys to know, you know, what a huge blessing you are. Because I mean, I want to tell you. Sometimes I get on the radio and I feel like. I mean, for years, for years, I was on the radio just thinking that, you know, I'm the only one out there and, you know, the only reason I'm on the radio is because, is because they don't have anybody else. And, you know, then Jim came along, thank God, and, and now you guys are here. And so, you know, I was just, I was talking earlier that, um, you know, when you're, when you're a Christian and you're trying to walk the line, it gets, it gets very, very lonely if you don't have people around. So, um, I want to thank you guys. Thank you. That, you know, you guys are all here. I want to thank you for being here. So, if, uh, you know, I didn't bring coffee and donuts this morning, but you know, if you want to join us down to Joyce or down to uh, down to um, uh, Poor Decisions, then we can have coffee down there. And and thanks to uh, Stephen for coming out to to live stream it, and you uh, he may be coming out in the future. I think I think. Um, uh, you know, of course, we want to continue this on Saturdays, but I think the, the Saturday before the election is going to be a very, very, very important one. So please, please, you know, grab your friends, grab your family, grab people that you trust and love and care about and have them come up to, at the, at the very least, have them come to the one before the election. So I just, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you very much. Can you share something? Um, I've been in this community. If you're a Christian, locally talks about God, prayer. Back there in New Jersey, they don't do that. They don't care. And for a Christian, that, that's that's pretty plus. So you guys should feel blessed. If you live in a small town, you live in North Dakota, and uh, really take advantage of the prayer that you're allowed to open. Speak. Now they can open the speak back there. But watch how fast that business is shut down. It's just there's madness going on. Um, I came out here during the boom and uh, during the downturn, I looked at my wife and I said, "This is our home. This is what we're staying." I 
sold the Dusty Stage. Um, I'll never regret that, no matter what happens. But the prayer and the, the way that people conduct themselves around here, I mean, everyone should go through that. But the, the prayer part is very emotional, especially when you can't just come out and speak your mind because you know, somebody that, that thinks it's wrong. It's not the right thing to do. So I, I just want to put a few cents in the help and I'm privileged here in the small town of North Dakota. You can just openly come out and not be judged about it. I mean, it's almost the opposite here where you don't pray for something wrong. <laughs> and that's the way it should be. And, uh, that's the biggest part missing with the kids now. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle is hugely blessed. I think all you guys know I live over in Stanley, and you know my interaction with Tioga came from doing business here. You know, doing business with uh, Dave Thompson and the Kyle Campgrounds, and so it, it, it didn't take me. I came over every month, you know, take care of business and stuff, and it didn't take long to start to figure out that there was something that was completely, completely, completely different about Tioga. There's something so different about Tioga that is so special. And you know, I tell my wife all the time I regret buying a house over in over in Stanley like we did, but um, you know, that's why that's why I come over here. That's why that's why I offer my services to be economic development um, here in Tioga is because there's something there's my heart was drawn here. There's something just unlike any other city in in North Dakota that I've been to really Really, a lot of cities in the bit to around the nation, and so I, I hope that you guys know that. I hope you guys know that. You know, I believe in you guys. I believe in Tioga. I believe in North Dakota. And, you know, I just, I just, I just want to believe in some kind of a revival because I feel like Western North Dakota. I don't know what's going on in the rest of the nation, but I feel like Western North Dakota. We're just, we're just cut out in this little section here where. I mean, is this the last place we have any common sense? I don't know, but you know, I just, I just pray that we get to keep it. Just whatever we got, I pray that we get to hold on to it. So, we're being observed by now. We have governor and rising Well, you know, I, 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 I probably, you probably hear it on the radio sometimes, but. You know, we're very blessed. Um, the governor's office has been very interested in what's going on in Tioga. I think even he knows. I think we're very especially blessed because Brent Sanford and his wife are very devout. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but they are very devout. And so I think we've got some some Christian perspectives and some Christian leadership in Bismarck. And, um, you know, of course, with Congressman Kevin Kramer, Congressman Kevin Kramer is extremely devout. I mean, he is, you know, he is, you know, uh, stratospherically devout, and so you know we just appreciate all that. And man, I just I'm just telling you, man, we just we gotta hang on to what we got. We just, we just gotta hang on to it. And so, anyways, if you guys wanna go to <laughs> that's the Lord. <laughs> all right, so if you guys wanna have coffee, we can go to Four Decisions or whatever. But. Oh, okay. thank you for coming out. Right. I thank you, you. it was a huge blessing. <laughs> I hate that place because of the name already. Thank you for that voice projection, man. That, that's inspiring. That, that loud praying is inspiring.